today we're going to look at the UI24 and its custom brackets. Just got it shipped in two months ago. I'm a little late. Let's look at it and check it out. All right, guys. So, Sanji, 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 I think it is. Uh, sent me this um, as a prototype to test it out because he doesn't have the mixer itself, but there was a high demand for this bracket. So let's unbox it, check it out. So from my understanding, he has a CNC at home and uh, he has a nice little website, which I'll link down below. And he makes these brackets. We'll go on each side of the UI24. Now, why would I want these brackets? Um, well, the thing is with the one that comes with it is very nice and all. It has rubber around it. We'll check it out in a minute when we open this road case. But these, why there's so many holes is because I can adjust how far in they are. Uh, so this basically what it does is recesses the UI24 deeper or more out into the rack. Uh, that could be useful for if you have some XLRs pre-connected in, in there and you need it to close the case like this one has a shallow uh, cover over it so an XLR would have to bend um, my finger doesn't bend that way <laughs> would have to bend for the cover to close or even not be able to close so uh, I know there's 90 degree uh, XLRs you can get which is what I have on certain things in this one uh, as well as my other rack that I have but what happens with the 90 degrees is that it blocks off uh, another input. If you only need a few inputs, that's fine. Uh, but, and it also does a cleaner look. But if you're somebody who's serious and uses all 24 ports, that might be an issue. So let's get this open, check it out. So as you can see, I have a 90 degree here as well as here so this one's not so bad because it only blocks off the knobs that you quite honestly never use but this one as you can see it's blocking number 11. now some people would say well just do a 45 like that but then you're blocking this one and so on right so if you're only using the top row and you're only using 10 channels or a couple at the bottom or whatever uh, or if you angle them up and you angle them down, like you can make it work. Uh, if you angle them up, they won't look as clean to me. Uh, maybe if they're in a, a 45 degree angle like this, maybe, then all the cables are going to go out to the side. But I don't feel like that does really much of a clean job sometimes. And again... It all depends what you're trying to look to doing. So what we'll do is we'll take this apart, we'll replace the brackets and we'll see how it looks. All right, so now that we have it taken apart, we have three screws right here. One thing I don't like about this, uh, well, how can I say it? I'll just show you, give me a second. This is what holds your whole entire rack, which isn't much. I feel like uh, Soundcraft could have made it a little stronger. I mean, there is three of them, so it's pretty solid and I haven't heard anybody having issues with strength, but I don't know. Seeing the size of the screws, 
worry me a little bit. All right. So let's compare these together. Oop. So they're pretty much the same. The gap is a little bigger with these, uh, which I believe could be kind of useful for different brands of connectors. They're a little fatter, or if you have a lot of cable and you need that extra room, that could be kind of useful, especially if you have 24 inputs going through these uh, in certain cases. Not everybody needs that much room, but you get a little more. You get maybe like about a quarter inch more or so. Yeah. Now you don't have the rubber boot on this one, but quite honestly, do you really need it? Now I think I have the, yeah, I have the right side. So let's get the left side. All right. Oh. All right. So I have these installed. Whoa. Look how much deeper that's going to be. Let's check it out. Oh God, yeah, that's freaking cool. All right, let's rack it up, put the screws back in, use the right bit this time. Oops. This looks cool. Like I don't need it to be recessed in my case. Or at least this one, maybe the the other one. But like, I think it looks cool, period. It opens up a little more. Probably just gonna leave it, to be honest, even though I have the 90 degrees. Or I might even switch it back up because it does block uh, channel 11, which I, I've had to actually swap out once or twice. Rarely, but sometimes I just need that extra channel. Now I know, I know. If you're gonna use 20 ports or, or inputs, Simon just, just, just get a real soundboard. Well, yes, but that also costs money. I have this one. And sometimes I don't have the room. I don't have an FOH, you know. Sometimes I do bar gigs or little festivals or whatever that doesn't have the room for a 10 by 10 tent or uh, has room for a table for an FOH, uh, especially bars. Like, they're crowded and they want the most space for their customers. So sometimes this is just useful. Anyways, we got it racked up. Let's plug it all in. Wait. You know, maybe I should set an example here. I'll use these just to get a better idea. This is the opposite end for my main, but that's okay. Look at that. I mean, it doesn't completely take off the depth of it, but if I was to compare to a 90 degree, if this was flushed, obviously it'd be connected in. It's a lot better. And now I have access to all my inputs. How wonderful is that? Now, you, obviously you can adjust it if you don't want it as deep because sometimes you have something in the back. Um, now the connections at the back are off the side and not on the back, so, and it's pretty shallow. It's only about, eight inches or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, it makes it a lot cleaner. Uh, but you could also, instead of using these holes for your connections, you could also get a tidier look if you're going the other way, like this as well. You know, because now it's a little more flush. 
And even if you had 90 degrees like this, you have a lot more room. So for example, you use one of these, you know, you're, it's permanent install. Now, obviously this is only a two rack space. You'd need a four for this one. That's what I had just kicking around. But if you have, well, this one's pretty, pretty deep, but hold on. Here's a better example. You have a permanent install and you want to install this. Now with the regular rack, even with the 90 degree, you would be hitting your grill. So at least with this, with the 90 degree, it's more recessed in. And that could be very useful for a lot of different opportunities. Now, obviously I'd have to just trim a little to clear your bracket but for permanent install that's 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 nothing you just need a little bit of elbow grease but that saves a lot a lot of issues now again i put the link down in the link uh in the description down below uh if i can get my words straight <laughs> um now he's local to the ottawa region uh which is about an hour's drive from where I live. Um, and I don't know where the box went. Oh, look at it. Right over here. So, Senji Design. He does uh, brackets, rack ears for the Soundcraft UI 24 and uh, 16. I believe he's going to be looking into making some for the UI 12, which isn't rack mountable but it could be so because it has the same screws off the side so uh he's designing rack ears for that obviously the rack here would be the same on one side but the other side would have to be a bigger blank now uh i'm working with him to see if we can get one made uh as well as they make he makes them for the behringer x air rack mountables uh, he's, I'm trying to get him to make some, uh, for the Shure microphones, uh, just because in my other rack with these half wave antennas, the rack doesn't close because this sticks out too much. Um, so I'm trying to get him to make it a little more recessed so I can close my cover without having to take these off every single time um, because after a while these kind of get used up and bent and stuff so I'd rather leave them plugged in and I'm sure some of you do too so again go check out his website he has different things it's pretty cool what he has he's just a little small shop uh, locally and he'd like to expand so go give him some love I don't think he has a YouTube channel but if he does it's up on his website and I'll put a link down below all right, till next time, uh, you know, we'll see each other again. A uh, little insider, if you kept watching the video till the end, we're going to be looking at building a custom stage uh, shortly. Uh, so please subscribe. That's going to be a multi-video uh, coming up. If you have any suggestions on features you'd like to see on a mobile stage, now it's just going to be a bumper hitch style stage. We're making out of a old RV frame, I believe is 25 feet long. Um, comment down below. I'd, I'd love to hear different inputs to make it better. Uh, and then we also have some more videos coming up on, um, I forget. <laughs>
doesn't have any wheels, so we're gonna add some wheels. Pretty simple to do, but we'll do video about it for those who don't really know how to do it, um, or at least solid. As well as what we'll do is instead of buying rack mountable drawers, which I'm not a huge fan of, I'm gonna build my own out of half inch plywood. So we're gonna make a video about that. Uh, we also got slides for them and these are push open, which is awesome. Uh, so that if it is open and it's slightly slanted, it's not gonna open up on you because it's locked and you just gotta push to open it. Now, uh, these are pretty cool. I got them in black, which was kind of cool. We don't have that stainless steel looking like. Um, so yeah, subscribe for that. That might be a two-parter video or one big video. I'm not sure yet, um, but stay tuned. Click like, subscribe. Uh, it helps grow my channel uh, enormously, uh, especially that we're just starting off. And um, I'd love to be able to make more videos for you guys. So till next time, keep it real.